I am Colonel Tom Kelly, and we're in the woods at Westerville. And we're going to read from 10th Legion this afternoon to start off. I did 10th Legion. I started doing 10th Legion in 1972. Uh, the idea came from my wife. She said, you, if, you, if you're going to keep telling these stories, you ought to try to get them in print someplace. And I started off by dictating this thing into a handheld portable dictating machine going back and forth driving around in the woods. Uh, got somebody to put some of the, I got somebody to type the thing from the tape. And then of course, this when I, when I, when I began to get near the end of it, I got interested in it, got interested in doing what it was doing. Uh, and then I got, didn't figure it, at that point in time, uh, if you'll accept my calculations for these things, there were not any more than 1,500 spring turkey hunters in the entire world at the beginning of 1960. Uh, I knew that there were not, and, and none of the stuff that you saw that anybody had done about turkey hunting was, in my opinion, worth a damn. It was a bunch of guys who had taken, who were hunters, but they had taken other kind of hunting and just turned it into a turkey hunt. And it, 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 none of it rang true at all. Every turkey shot in those things was always shot on the wing. Uh, nobody even talked about shooting turkeys on the ground. Uh, they went out and built blinds and there would be a guy who had never heard a turkey in his life, probably, talk about how great the calling was and how much like a turkey it sounded, which is about the equivalent of letting me judge coloratura sopranos at tryouts for the Metropolitan Opera, you know. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> I thought, I'm, I'm going to do this specifically for turkey hunters. hunters. There ain't enough of us not accounting. There never will be enough of us. Uh, no publishing firm is going to take anything, going to have anything to do with it because at this point they, they are only interested in literary content and at this point I have never written anything that didn't start off with Dear Mother so I knew damn well nobody would take it for literary content. And I got to asking around and an outfit called Theo Ghost, in Mobile we would pronounce that Goss but he pronounced it Ghost in Brooklyn, advertised that they did printings of people who who had uh, written something that they wanted to get in print. It's the Ego Press. It's like the little old lady who writes the history of St. Vincent's Altar Society and she knows the only people who are going to buy it are her son-in-laws and the other little old ladies in the Altar Society. But I paid, uh, in fact, I think it says so in here. I paid, I paid Theo Gosen's sons the total amount of $1,211.25, which included freight, for what was supposed to be 500 copies and come down, it turned out to be 555, and he sent me the extras. Uh, I figured at that point, and we were going to sell the book, I think at that time, for $4.50, and I think at that time I figured if I sold, well, in the first place, I figured, hell, there's at least 200 guys that don't know I can read and write, and they will, I, I obviously, most of them, most of them will buy one. If I sell 200 copies, I got my bait back, and then once I get my bait back, if I never sell another one, then I got a lifetime supply of Christmas presents. I'll never have to shop for a Christmas present again as long as I live. Well. It rocked along. It, it did pretty well. It, uh, it, we, we, we got fairly near the end of the damn thing, to tell you the truth. And I tried to give the copyright to the Alabama Wildlife Federation, and they wouldn't take it because at that time, the guy who was head of the Wildlife Federation said it had dirty words in it. It does. Turkey hunters, all turkey hunters that I know use dirty words regularly, uh, sometimes to one another. Uh, <laughs> Or about, <laughs> or about one another, right? So uh, uh, they they didn't want it, and uh, uh, the the and I I figured really it was going to die right there, and then I got a letter from a law firm in in Monroe, Louisiana. Uh, George Snelling was the head of the firm, and he said that a client of theirs, a Mr. McLemore, who owned a series of sporting goods stores in in in, in Louisiana and Arkansas, had read the book and had liked it and he'd made copies of it on his office machine equipment and was sending copies to his friends. Well, you can imagine how long it took him to come to this point. I mean, he didn't do it nearly as quickly as I did. 
and I wrote him back and told him to tell Mr. McLemore I was not a professional at this. I was having a good time. I was delighted if he wanted to do this with his friends, feel free. And then I got another letter back from the law firm saying, well, could they publish the book, the law firm? Partly that was because I was such a charming personality, but largely it was so I couldn't change my mind later and say, copyright, I got your ass, you know. Uh, but anyway, they did, they did the second edition, the third, and I think the fourth. And at about that point, my wife and Betty Jo Wolf in Fairhope, the woman who runs the bookstore down there, formed Wingfeather Press and began to do it. And it went through eight editions or nine until Lions and Buffett took it over. And uh, I think the one now, the paperback one, would probably be the 10th. Uh, and I, I really didn't think there were that many turkey hunters out there. But the thing has been continuously in print since, eight, since 1973, which means that there's really no limit on poor taste. It's poor taste is always with them. <laughs> now let's read the book. All right. All right, 10th Legion. Note, none of the characters in this book are in any way fictional or imaginary. All of them are real people who have been known to the author for years. Statements made herein concerning timber, people, or the physiological processes of turkeys are matters of opinion and are subject to discussion. Statements made herein concerning the thought processes of turkeys or of deer hunters are known scientific facts and are not open to question. The author declines to debate the accuracy of these with anyone. He is, however, perfectly willing to fight about them. Preface to the 1998 edition. Theo Gose's sons, who operated out of 30 Prince Street in Brooklyn, advertised themselves as limited edition book printers since 1874. The phrase limited edition printers is, of course, a euphemism for those concerned with printing books for which the author thinks he may not be able to find a publisher, but which contain ideas he feels are sufficiently important for him to be willing to pay the publishing costs himself. In August of 1973, I paid Theo Gose's sons the total amount of $1,211.25, which included freight, for 555 copies of 10th Legion. The original order was for 500. There were 55 extras that were sent at no extra cost. I proposed to sell the book for $4.95, which would give me back bait back upon the sale of the 245th copy. In my opinion, there was at the time nearly 200 guys who were not aware that I could read and write, and native curiosity would cause most of them to buy the book. I figured that even if things stopped there, I had a lifetime supply of Christmas presents already in hand and would recoup the balance of the money in the form of saving wear and tear on the nervous system during the annual Christmas shopping season. Things worked out better than I thought they would. Since the book has been in print continuously for all of the 25 years that have elapsed since August of 1973 and has gone through seven printings, every one very small, everyone done by a ragtag collection of pseudo publishers, one of whom were for a length of time that spanned two or three editions, being a law firm in Louisiana. Finally, after 25 years of common law irregularity, a legitimate publishing firm has made an honest, an honest woman of it. There's an old story to the effect that if you persist in eating soup out of doors, there will be periods when rainfall during the mealtime will make it difficult to finish. The quality of the soup diminishes, but the volume holds its own. We know a good deal more about turkeys than we did 25 years ago, but there have not been enough changes to make the book so far out of date that it has become invalid. The people, of course, are just as feckless and irresponsible as ever. The soup remaining in the bowl, though aged past the first peak of freshness and no longer of its original strength, is still perfectly acceptable. And this time, wrapped as we are in the cloak of legitimacy, there is no need to worry about debate. 